Ah, hallo, Kapuzin. Hi. Hi. Hallo, Lena. Uh, nice to see uh, you again. Yeah, nice to see you too. Nice. Even from a distance. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I, I'm very happy to welcome uh, here Kapusin Chiaudani. She's an Italian okay. opera singer, dramatic soprano, and a voice teacher. Um, and I wanted to say just a few things about you, and then after that, we're going to talk a little bit about vocal technique, and uh, in particular, vocal support or breath support, which is something that a lot of people are interested in. Okay. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, Capuchin is an accredited voice professor in the Kaleidos University of Zurich, Switzerland. She gave master classes in universities and opera studios, such as the University of the Arts in Bern and the Swiss Opera Studio in Biel. And she is also going to be invited uh, to the Mediterranean Opera Studio Festival in Italy. So th those are just a few examples of where um, you're going to teach or where you are teaching, basically. So those are really nice credentials. Um, and uh, Capuchin also sang in uh, quite a few renowned opera houses around the world, such as the Open House Zurich, uh, the Concertgebouw in Amsterdam, uh, the Teatro Filarmonico di Verona, and many others. And uh, the roles that she sang. Massimo Bellini in Catania. Uh. <laughs> yeah, there, there's a long I'm list. Uh, I'm going to link, you know, of course, I'm going to link to. Uh, your website when people can see your biography. Um, if they have a couple of nights to clear, then they can read through the, all of the things that you've done. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's quite quite impressive. Like you sang Medea, Tosca, Desdemona, Leonora, Mimi, Fior di Ligi, and the Spina, which are two, you know, roles in the same opera, Donna Elvira, and so on. Like the, there are so many things. Um, there's like, yeah, it, needless to say that you are very experienced, an eh? experienced uh, singer and an experienced teacher. And we met in Amsterdam, right? I reached out to you because I saw a LinkedIn video uh, when you give a master class and I was like, hmm, seems like uh, I can maybe learn something <laughs> there. And then we just started, uh, you know, exchanging ideas and uh, having yeah. lessons together. Um, which is very uh, interesting for me. Yes, it's always interesting to make ex exchanges uh, also between colleagues, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, yeah I think so. And definitely. enrich uh, ourselves uh, yeah, through this exchange. It's important. I think it's, it's good. It's, it's important to be generous and not to keep uh, <laughs> the knowledge for us. I think it's important to share Absolutely. it, especially, especially in this period, more than ever. So... Absolutely. Yeah, we are sure. <laughs> yeah, and I mean the, the the you call it generosity, and I heard people uh, also describe it as generosity when you give your information, but you also get something back, right? So it is, it's um, it's very beneficial to you if you're sharing things. Yes, it's with true. Other it's callings. True. You gave me something back. I remember you explained me how to combined singing with yoga. That was something new for me. I remember it very well. It was very nice. So yeah, we can you inspire remember others and others can inspire us, right? Yeah. And do you yeah. remember how we started talking about support? Because I remember you started talking about it and then I thought mm -hmm. we need to do an interview. Uh -huh. Yes. So here we are. Finally, we did it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, I want to talk about it, um, but I also want to read something from, I think it's, it's on your website, right? The, your philosophy, mm -hmm. in philosophy. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so of course I'm going to link to it, but I just want to read something. And I also have a question for you about that. Mm. Uh, mm -hmm. What Capucin is writing about her passion. My passion is to inspire and empower younger singers to become the best versions on, of themselves. My yes. passion is to give back trust and faith to singers who lost them. Yes. 
My passion is to help singers to free and let their true voice sing and swing. Because by doing that, what really sings and swing, in fact, is not only the instrument voice, but much more important, it is the soul that sings and swings. So I, I want to know what you mean by swings. What does that mean to sing and swing? Well, it means just that uh, everything uh, comes alive and vibrates. I mean, mm. your, your inner self, yes. It's not just about, uh, I think, um, this passion that all singers have, this need, it's really a need. Mm. Yes. It's a must. I, I need to sing. I have to sing. If I can't sing, I, 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 I I'm, will not uh, find my peace somehow, right? this um need, it's a need right especially in uh, younger ages i think it comes really from 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 our inner soul and it's our, our soul who wants to to communicate to the world mm -hmm. to get in contact with others it's a way to right to give a voice to to our soul it's not just about the vocal folds of course we are now, uh, we will speak about technique and it should sound beautiful. I mean, uh, I'm a specialist about bel canto, but so beautiful singing, of course. And uh, we need to learn strategies and maneuvers exactly as uh, a sportler, uh, exactly as uh, someone who can play well shach. Uh, these are just maneuvers. It's not that you mm. need to be a genius. You don't need to be the reincarnation of colors to sing well, you just need to have clarity and awareness and consciousness and know that it's all about body, <clears throat> mm -hmm. body consciousness and connection, mm? voice body. When you know this, you never go actually hmm, underneath a certain level. This will be your ground, your platform. From that platform, you will <laughs> have good days or bad days, but you always will have this ground underneath, yeah? Mm -hmm. So, um, of course, this is the technique. This is the vocal technique, is training. And training what? Training muscles. Basically, it's training muscles. Mm -hmm. But at the, at the end, I mean, if we want to see a deeper meaning, why do we do that? Well, <laughs> of course, it's not only about singing. It's, it's much more than that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I believe. I, believe I feel the same the, way. And also, my in my experience, the um, it's uh, I mean maybe it's especially young singers, but I actually, for some reason, get a lot of uh, people writing to me that are in their fifties and on, and yes. who are saying basically, I always sing just for myself, but I don't think I can do it, but I I I have to do it. So yeah. I I can't stop I can't stop singing or I can't shake that need like you say for singing and I've decided to take voice lessons one like first time in my life and I'm 65 yeah, yeah so yeah, yeah th this happens a lot like if, uh, also if you me, have I mean, that so like that love yeah, for yeah. singing that sticks with you um, and doesn't let go. No, and it's also never late to, to try and, uh, and to start to do it. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Sometimes also uh, it might be, it can happen also that someone told you, oh, you cannot sing or you don't have a nice voice or you don't have a good uh, ear. And so you feel like ashamed about your voice. And so you stop, you close. Mm -hmm. uh, but this remains under the surface, under the skin. And sometimes it's at a certain moment of your life it comes out. Huh? Yes. But I need, I exactly. need, and I think everyone uh, has the right to sing, as everyone has the right to, to breathe, and everyone has the right to, to live. It's a right, it's a uh, primary I, right. And uh, yes, it, it helps, it helps really to, it's a catharsis of the spirit. It's important, I yeah. think. That's, that's a whole other discussion, right? Like, that's a whole other topic on how, uh, basically, how singing is connected with our personality, and how you know. Uh, also, how you know if you take that as a profession, sometimes you forget that it is for your spirit, and it yes. sort of becomes your job. 
Uh, but th this is a really, uh, this just, is a really uh, interesting uh, unfortunately, thing. Unfortunately, this is what happens very, very often when it becomes a profession to pay your bills. Yes, mm -hmm. you, you step away and you lose a bit the, the real meaning and why you started this. And it mean, I mean, at least uh, it, it must not happen, but it may happen. It happened to me, to be honest. I'm very sincere and not ashamed about saying that, uh, of course, it uh, was for me an ecstasy, a joy. It was uh, going in trance singing. And I always mm -hmm. did it also already as a child. I sang uh, when I was playing, when I was drawing, when I was walking on the street, <laughs> I was singing, I was loud, I didn't care. It was my way to be on this earth. And nice. yes, it was in me, in somehow in my, mm, yeah, chromosomes, let's say. And so it was rather a, an easy choice to say, well, that's my path. But when it started to become a job, as you said, uh, mm -hmm. to, to pay the bills. <laughs> and when it starts to become a competition, because it is a competition at high level, this it is exactly, exactly as being at the Olympia Games. Nothing different, nothing more and nothing less. Well, yeah. then there are other things. Huh? The pressure, you have to prove, you have to be good. You cannot make mistakes. It becomes very... <sighs> tough and you need to be very strong here. So all this dimension of joy, well, leaves the place for something else. And then it's easy to lose the first original motivation, which is actually the pearl, our diamond. We, mm. should, not ne we should never, never allow this. Yeah. To lose this. If you lose this... Or at least you should moment, have a way yeah. back. Yeah, because if you lose this at a certain moment, uh, you will be uh, in the game running and you will under, uh, not understand anymore why you're doing it. Why am I running? <laughs> why? Yes. Why all this pressure? Why all this competition? So this pearl, this diamond, this energy, this light, why we start to, to, to sing this joy that we feel, uh, giving voice to our soul, this should always be with us. Yes. I think it's the most important thing, even uh, being a professional or not, doesn't matter. And I think that people sometimes, as you said uh, two minutes ago, uh, I get the request from uh, older persons with, uh, in their 60s or so. It's wonderful. This means that all their life, you know, they had this, they had this sort of dream in a cupboard. And finally, it came the moment to having the courage to take it out and say, yes, now it's the moment. I wish to do this still in, in this life. It's important. And I think we are here to help them, to guide them, to say, yes, yes, of course, you have the right to, to express yourself, to express your soul. So just yeah. to make a connection between this and the vocal technique, vocal technique is not, in my opinion, the aim, the aim, the yeah. last destination. Okay. It's a path. Mm -hmm. It's the street on which we go. Right. Yeah. If you have a stable street, well, you can walk a bit more stable. <laughs> it's easier to walk. Yeah. But it's yeah. not the street. It's the, the destination is another one. Right. Right. And do you it's remember, right. um, you know, coming from that place of being a child and just singing because you wanted to? Do you remember when you realized, oh, there's this thing called support that I'm supposed to do? <laughs> And how do I do that? Well, yes. So can you tell us about that uh, period when you, when you got to know that concept of support? And what did you learn about well, it? Uh, yes, 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 yes. Well, this question uh, is a must when you, of course, um, want to make uh, uh, out uh, from singing your profession. You need really to know uh, how to, uh, well, to get this resistance, this stamina, mm? especially in classical singing, in opera singing. Uh, we are on stage uh, two hours, three hours. It's, it's really a marathon. Uh? Mm. Uh, we have long phrases. We have, uh, <laughs> of course, uh, long lines. Yeah, I need so to sing without the microphone. No microphone and this extraordinary big uh, halls, uh, theaters to fill. So it starts to become 
really uh, a must to understand how can I mm, support my voice. What does it mean to support my voice? It means really to, to support, to help, to supporting, to caring, mm. to holding. Yes. And because, well, at the start, everything is possible. When you are young, uh, there is uh, the, the will, the will to win, the will to do it. You are strong, you are young. But when you start while well, to sing hours and hours of rehearsals and performances and, and time goes by, years go by, you realize, well, this is not enough anymore. Just the instinct, eh? the nature. Nature is very important. Talent is uh, one big part. Eh? But then there has to be work, training. Eh? What is training? Training is um, creating, I think, um, certain patterns that help us. Eh? Like uh, in every sport. I mean, a good uh, tennis player is not a good tennis player just because of his talent maybe yes maybe yes well, <laughs> He's a wonderful not the best of the, the best of the best they train like yes players. usually there is always uh, a technique which means to know exactly the maneuvers that you need to do yes to, to, to put uh, uh, in place and this is the same thing for us so uh, at a certain moment when you start to make singing competitions auditions and so on you, you need to find this Clarity. And so as a young singer, usually you start looking for this everywhere, right and left, right and left, <laughs> from one teacher to, to, to the other. And sometimes if you are lucky and you find a person who you can trust, well, then it's easy. Then you find this clarity soon, this light. <laughs> and sometimes not. Sometimes you have really to, ah, to look around, to search uh, a, a mentor, a, a guide who really yeah. can support you like every sporter has a trainer yeah yeah and give you this um yeah i want to i want to know your opinion about why why do you think teachers don't agree about it because if it, from what you're saying this is what i i interpret that uh, like my experience every teacher that i went to was describing support in a different way yes so we still haven't defined it, by the way. We didn't give a definition of what is support. You gave a metaphor, it's like it's carrying the voice, it's helping the voice. Um, but we are, we're gonna talk about that in a minute, but yeah, it's just different. It's different terminology and different instructions. Basically everywhere you look, why, why do you think that's the case? Okay. Um, first of all, I want to say that I respect everyone. Every, I, 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 I think uh, that everyone does his best. Yeah. A teacher, a vocal coach, a trainer does his best at this very moment of his life. What he knows, what is his awareness or her awareness or consciousness or knowledge or experience. And she can just offer what she knows and what she experienced yeah it's never bad will it's never <laughs> I, I don't want to help or i want to give bad instructions no. so said this starting from the point that i think that everyone is in, in a good faith uh certainly there are some problems one is we don't see our instrument mm. it's not a violin it's not a guitar <laughs> we don't see it we don't even sometimes even feel it. We feel it when it, 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 is, uh, it has pain. Uh? And so it's difficult. What happens here? Ma? Who knows? Mm. It's a mystery. And, um, uh, it, well, it, it is a mystery to some, but we know a lot about the voice, but maybe some teachers um, are not as familiar with the vocal anatomy. Yes, uh, for centuries we were taught to sing and learn singing just with the acoustic feedback. This is mm. also how I was trained. This was mm. how, um, I don't know, Caruso was trained. I mean, uh, right. this, and it functioned because we had uh, really fantastic singers, especially in Italy. So somehow this works. But nowadays we have also the possibility to look, <laughs> finally, with technology. Oh, and we can see what happens. Oh, interesting. Yeah. 
look yeah. what happens. Ah, <laughs> so it's nice to get, of course, some more information and uh, to get then also more control. Knowing more gives you more control. More control yes. gives you more power. More power gives you more freedom. Mm -hmm. You have a control. It's not a wonderful horse which carries you somewhere. No, you, you can take the horse in control and say, yeah. well, let's go to the right, thank you, because I know how to do it. We understand more uh, the specific uh, uh, ingredients or elements that um, uh, do a classical singer. Classical singing is not an easy recipe. If we want to make a comparison with recipes, uh, I mean, um, there are uh, other styles of singing which are a bit more simple. To make a classical singer, an opera singer, you need ears. And you need ears because you need to train different muscles and different elements. What uh, the knowledge give us, what the consciousness give us, it's the ability, the skill to uh, recognize these and isolate these elements, isolate these muscles and train them. So it becomes a very detailed, uh, uh, refined uh, work. And it's very fascinating. And then it's not just the ear, which is absolutely okay, and we will always use it, but we have then two feedbacks, the ear and the body. Yeah. Which is a better <laughs> way than just to have one feedback, right? Right. So this is nice. Before, basically before that, before being aware of all of this knowledge, we were dependent on intuition, basically. Yes, that's true. But that's why it's so individual. Yes, and also I think there is some time, to be honest, I think, uh -huh. I looked a bit around sometime in the internet, I, I, I listen at other persons, how do, exp do they explain something? Sometimes it's just really a matter of words. Sometimes we use different words, uh, to say the same thing. So this yes. uh, might also, maybe also be a cause of the confusion and maybe we mean yes. the same thing, you know? Yeah, I agree. I Italy, feel- every, I It's in Italy, uh, every, every street brings to Rome, you know? There are many ways, many perspectives, yeah? It's not, that's not mean mm -hmm. that uh, they are wrong. Right, right. Okay, so now maybe you wanna tell us what is your, approach to support how how to do it what's going on what is it well it's very difficult to say it into words to be honest no there's I you will do my best time to here. Do. this I is the meat. this is the meat of the conversation so take your time yes i will try to make an espresso coffee <laughs> like in italy <laughs> to come to that yeah. And um, of course, I cannot uh, now uh, be, uh, I mean, long and detailed. So I will try really to come to the point. Yes. And maybe going so fast and synthesizing uh, all the information that we would need with more time, it might be also that it's a bit not really clear, but I will try to do my best to be clear. So if we want to to say it in one word let's make it really really brutal really super simple in one word not blah 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 what is my support mm -hmm. in my opinion in my humble opinion and i might be wrong but this is what i experienced and what i i learned in my life is resistance resistance I like this work word for me yeah breath support, uh, if I have to think, what is it and how do I feel it physically, is resistance. For me, this, is, this gives me clarity, yeah? Mm -hmm. And why? Why do I say this? Well, first of all, the word, the definition, the English definition, breath support, breath support might uh, create quite a lot of confusion because you hear in this definition, breath. The, the, the word breath. So you think, okay, breath support, maybe I have to keep more breath. Breath support, maybe I have to push more breath. Probably, because 
if the definition says that support might be. Yes. So this is a cause of a lot of confusion that uh, most of the singers, 99.9% just push. And what do they push? They push too much breath. What does it mean? It means, first of all, that they inhale too much, first of all. So the first point would be already just inhale what you need. Mm? Mm -hmm. two, two, two words, let's say two grams, <laughs> 20, 20 notes, 20 grams. I mean, to learn to, to inhale just enough. And usually we always inhale in classical singing as if we would start to sing the Aida. <laughs> also for vocalizers, this is really a sort of complex we have, me too, so we'll come on the boat. I learned it very late, very late that I actually inhaled always too much, too mm -hmm. much. And what happens if you inhale, inhale too much? Well, a younger singer thinks, oh, this is great, I feel strong, wow, this is my power, this is the, the fuel in the car. Mm. Is it true? Really? When you breathe too much, what happens is that here, wow, you create a sort of tsunami, <laughs> a tempest of air that really <laughs> starts to make such an incredible pressure, such an incredible, really, disturbance against uh, the, the vocal, vocal cords. cords, which are here. Mm? They are like a sort of, let's say, valve door. Let's say this is the door at the stadium, and now, now we have the molecules of air here eh? that, that, that create pressure that is completely normal. We can feel it immediately. When we, for example, just easy, easy example, we, we, we breathe in very shortly and we close the vocal cords as if we would, for example, huh, jump in a swimming pool. Eh? So we mm -hmm. breathe in. close. What happens? Oh my God, what happens? Ah. <laughs> immediately, immediately, in the speed of a second, pressure, immediately, yes. we can't avoid it. So every time that we close the vocal cords, we have pressure. Okay, that's natural, that's normal, nothing bad with it. What is not natural is that we create a tsunami here. <gasps> okay, now the hooligans <laughs> come and create really pressure against the vocal cords. So what happens <laughs> when we do this, which is not clever, but this is one of the biggest uh, mistakes of younger singers with a little experience that they breathe too much, yeah? And so what happens is that this pressure is so terrible that, well, first of all, we get, oh, oh my God, and the vibrato starts to become very unstable. Then mm -hmm. what happens is this, that the halligans go through the door. So we get breathy sounds. Yes. Uh, and when we are really <laughs> in the unlikely uh, situation, this happens. The mm. halligans open the door. Yep. So first of all, please breathe less. <laughs> yeah. Can I just say one, I want to say one thing. Um, yeah, it's just from the student perspective to, to make that clear. Uh, the, the breathy sound means that your vocal cords don't close properly. And if, you know, and if they have that pressure on them, then we call it subglottal pressure, right? Then basically it's like the, the hooligans is the, is the air, it bursts the vocal cords open. And then you cannot get your, basically your efficient and and healthy sound um, and the tragic thing is that you worked so hard for it right you worked so hard for that good sound and eventually you know you don't get the sound you don't get maybe half the sound because half of it is air yes and air is noise huh? air is noise so if we breathe in uh, let's say in a balanced way no huh? we get something very interesting i will show you this because this is very funny so, oh, cool. it, it's nice, it's nice, it's very clear, more than a thousand words. So if I do, if I just read here, what happens to this, to this nice sheet of paper? Mm -hmm. Do they get out? By the way? Or in? We don't know, we will see. 
Oh, interesting, huh? Mm -hmm. They come together. So this is the Bernoulli effect. This is exactly what happens when we make the shower and the, and the, how do you say the, help me, your English is better, Lenore. When we are in the shower? Yes, and uh, the tissue comes uh, near us. This is really a sort of attraction. Huh? Mm -hmm. So okay. this is good I was, because I if, if we use the uh, nice and balanced uh, amount of air, it helps us actually to phonate, to make the adaption. It's wonderful. But mm -hmm. if it is too much, and very often it is too much, uh, mm -hmm. then we have a problem. Then eventually it will open our vocal folds. Or instead of singing on the air, we sing with the air which is not good, which is what Lenore said one moment ago, to sing in a very breathy way. Mm -hmm. So like, uh, Michel, my bell, la, la. this is breathy sound. Mm -hmm. It can be fantastic maybe for some uh, soul uh, or jazz, but certainly not, certainly not in classical singing, mm -hmm. where we need to have a clear sound, an intense sound, a rich sound, so the main thing is to find at the source, which is this. Huh? We have the source, which creates the sound, huh? the power, which is uh, the fuel, but should not be too much, huh? and amplification, the microphone, our microphone. Yeah? So at the source, we need to learn hmm, to create a clear sound. This is the A, B, C. If the sound, the so if the source is not clear, it's not clean, it's not intense, and well well uh, adapted, we cannot uh, adjust it. Also, our microphone and turn microphone, well, it will amplify a breathy sound. Yeah. So I, I need to translate a little bit because you you're talking with beautiful metaphors that I, I love that, uh, and it's really really um, help. It helps to understand the whole phenomenon. Uh, so when you're talking about the source, you're talking about the vocal cords, yes? Yes. They need to function properly. We need to know how to work with them. And that's actually something that I that, that is good to hear from other teachers. It's like a confirmation for me because I always say that support, um, you know, cannot be separated from the work of the vocal cords. Because you can work on support all day and all night, and if your vocal cords don't know how to close, then you're basically just working for yes. nothing. Yes, yes. So that's exactly. uh, that's good. That's a good thing to hear. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Go on. Go on. Yeah. So um, the 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 first step is to watch out uh, how is our uh, really the the start, the very start of the sound. The attack or the onset, it has to be clean, it has to be really proper. And how do we do this? Well, the vocal cords have to come together. Yeah, really. Mm. This means, uh, for what concerns the breath support, eh? I see it not from down to up, but I see it from this perspective, mm. up to down. It's okay. more important. Eh? that we close well and would we make a resistance against the breath mm. and pushing the breath. Pushing the breath is always very, very, very dangerous. As you saw before, I made a little example of closing my vocal cords and making this vacuum. Immediately, immediately the air that we have here immediately becomes compressed air. We mm -hmm. can't deny and we can't, uh, um, Yes, change this. So if we push air, it will, we will have even too much pressure. And this is not good. It has to be in balance, yeah? We need actually to resist for classical singing especially because we need long breaths. We need long phrases, yeah? Yes. For singing, huh? which is difficult. It's not easy. It's not something natural when we speak. We breathe very often. So we have to learn this. This is the training. We need really to uh, reprogram our brain, reprogram yeah. our memory. Oh, I have, I have to resist the breath. What? Whenever do we do this? I tell you. You resist the breath. You say you resist the breath also from the vocal cords themselves. The yeah. vocal cords should resist 
this pressure. The more they close well, the more they can you get this clean sound. And what is it? It's really resisting the air. So flow of air, yes. Pressure of air, no. Okay. All right. So this means uh, we we have to understand and think about the vocal cords as muscles. I mean, like this muscles, muscles of mm -hmm. yeah, any part of our body, maybe baby muscles because these are really one centimeter, one and a half, but muscles, nevertheless muscles, yeah. and they have to work as muscles proper. They have to be strong. If my vocal cords yeah are not really strong, it'll be like hmm, supple, hmm, lazy, yeah. What they will do, they will work like this. <laughs> Not good. They need to work like that. They have to be really tonic, elastic, strong muscles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if I make, for example, an attack or an answer, yeah, like oh, eh, e, it's too supple. The muscles inside my vocal cords are not working properly. They are a bit lazy in siesta time. So I cannot create from this kind of sound a powerful sound. Mm. The source we have to really remember us, am I closing well? Am I really making a good job? Yes, here at the source, my vocal cords are really resisting well. So it's not ah, uh, but it's ah, uh, e. A, and for a long sound, it's sort of mm. like a lot of <laughs> little, a, a series of A, 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 Yes, I'm always resisting the sound, which does not mean to make pressure. I don't need to make a baby, <laughs> but I need to work. It's a muscular activity. And when this is very, very microscopic, right? It's like a microscopic um, workout. Yes, I mean, uh, but it is as it is. This is what happens. This is really what happens. Huh? Mm -hmm. If you have consciousness about your body and you know it, well, it helps. It, it gives you clarity. You know, okay, it functions like this. This is why sometimes I have an attack or an onset, which is a bit breathy, and sometimes it works. What is the difference? It's the way. We close the vocal cords, and in other words, uh, it's the way uh, we resist the breath. That's yeah? right. The way we resist the breath, not the way we push, not how much we push the breath. It's the other way around. Right. And can you can you explain a little bit what is the area of the diaphragm and the rib? Yes, of course. Is of doing. Course. I wanted to to to, to come there. Uh, so yes. this is the first, for me, this is the first appoggio. Appoggio is an Italian word, very used in uh, vocal technique. I don't know who, who knows this uh, word of you, but it means, actually, it means translated, uh, literally. Appoggio means to lean, mm? to lean on something, to lean. Uh? And when we speak in, in Italian language about vocal technique, we speak not about breath support, we speak about appoggio. Actually, it's a more... It's more, more accurate. Yes. It's more correct, this word. So sometimes even the words that we use uh, in different languages might actually, might uh, create some confusion. Appoggio, so leaning, uh, translated, is more clear. It gives to your brain the message of what you're really doing because the first appoggio is what we said until now, huh? is the clear attacco, the clear onset. Actually, you make already here a little, little appoggio. Ah, 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 ah. On, on, yeah, on, your, on the breath. So we sing on the breath. We don't sing with the breath. I mean, we sing uh, with the breath when it's <laughs> intentionally like, uh, happy birthday to you. Mary Morrow was saying like this, but this was intentionally. Mm. Yeah. Yes, it should be a choice. So if we sing on the breath, it will be happy birthday to you. There will be no breath. It's not with, it's on the breath. 
it's sul fiato, on the breath, yeah? So this is the first appoggio. And then the real important, the real important power, the real important energy that really sustains our singing, which means that sustains our larynx, eh, is the, the big appoggio that we do with the body, which is a bit more than one centimeter. <laughs> The body is a bit more, so the, uh, so the whole strength that we need uh, to sing an opera, to sing a concert, a recital, but even just one aria comes from the body, not from here. This, while well, can compensate, and sometimes we do compensate here. Sometimes, yeah, when we don't have this um, still found still this connection, but this mm -hmm. is very very tiring, very tiring. And even professional stars sometimes got vocal crisis because they compensate, yeah, too much here with the best possible will. So it's very, very, very important that we find the appoggio in the body. And what is the appoggio in the body? Finally, we're right there. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> so, yes, the question uh, for $1 million. Uh, <laughs> Well, we make the poggio also uh, there again with muscles. It's not about pushing breath. It's never about pushing breath. I'm very sorry if someone of you thinks this, but it's not really true. Yeah. We Christina Aguilera, I think, once used the, this phrase. Uh, Christina Aguilera said, you need to push the breath out. So don't, don't listen to that. Listen to Capuchina, what she's uh, telling you. <laughs> So, I mean, I am not ashamed to say it. I am uh, uh, not younger uh, anymore, but when I was young, I had my nice vocal crisis. I did. Oh, yes, I'm not ashamed. It was tough. It was a tough time because I uh, was in, in my uh, blooming career and, uh, yeah, something did not function and I became tired. Yeah, the voice was not able to recover and Yes, I, I was able to, to do what I had to do, my duties and sing, but it was, the effort was too big. The price was too high. I was really consuming my capital and not my interest. Mm. My voice was starting to really <sighs> telling me, hello, I'm a bit tired. <laughs> yeah. Can we do something else? Uh, <laughs> help and me that, out. Yeah, and that happened because I was actually pushing. I was pushing breath. I so what is the alternative to pushing breath? It's not to pushing breath, it's to resist breath. We will always have, always, the instinct, the temptation to, and the need to, to do this, because yes. we need to survive, to survive, first of all, more than singing, and our body will want to breathe again. This is undeniable. Mm -hmm. What we do, so, now we come to the point finally after one hour <laughs> if you're still there if you survived all this introduction but actually it was important to explain the steps before because if i would have gone immediately here it would be have been like a cold shower what what is she speaking about yeah so said that the first apoggio happens at the source said that very important is not to breathe too much, said that we are resisting the breath. What happens here when we sing is actually, again, a muscular activity to resist the temptation uh, and, and the need of our uh, breath to go out and jump. So what does it mean? It means that when we breathe in, yeah, when we breathe in, our diaphragm, uh, which is placed here, as, as, as a dome shape, yeah? Mm -hmm. This I think probably everyone knows it. Mm -hmm. goes, goes down, expands, Every, everything is fine. Okay, this probably everyone knows. What most of people do not know, and this is the big uh, confusion, yeah? The big mistake, which I also did, eh? so I'm not better than others, is that very often what we think, well, my God, I need power, I have to push. I have to, whoo, <laughs> I have to help, yes? What I'm doing is extraordinary. And what you are actually doing, you are making a sabotage. Yeah, because again, you're putting pressure on the vocal cords. 
so you, terrible you pressure that this is one. really, yes, exactly, this is really a tsunami. So either you get a breath of sound or you ask to your vocal cords to work like them to keep this down. What actually a lot of people are able to do because they have iron vocal cords. I did it also. Hello. <laughs> I was also in the club. I was very good at it. I was even able to win competitions. But a certain day, my vocal cord said, listen, that's really too much. Bye bye. I go on holiday. I choose. Bye. And then this is what happened. This is what happens even when you are at the middle of your career. If you don't understand that what we need to do is to find the balance between this and the breath and so what is the balance what is the balance balance is to breathe in just what we need we said this before to hold before you start singing even you start before the singing before the sound you start the apoggio this means that after that you inhale so you expand it ah, your torso and now comes the music you should not jump in the music like ah okay i'm i'm coming ah it's gone no there must be a moment, a split of a second of awareness of holding. There must be a suspension. A moment where you froze. Nothing happens. You have to become very strong. All the muscles have to hold this expansion. This is already the start, actually, of the appoggio before the singing. And then when the singing comes, this is, of course, very, very fast. I'm explaining it in slow motion, yeah? yeah. You stay already, and you're already there in the appoggio position, yeah? And when you sing, while singing, uh, classical or not classical, even, even for pop music, but sometimes also there are long phrases, right? Long notes, right? So what we should do is to resist the temptation, to resist the need of our diaphragm to, to go back, to jump. So what we need to do and now we come to the one word I used at the start of our conversation. We need to do the resistance. It's all about resistance. So our diaphragm is used to go up and down maybe 12, 13 times in a minute, something like this, which is completely fine. And he does it since we are babies. So he's really an athlete, very trained, very strong. What we do, when we make the appoggio or breath support, doesn't matter how you name it. We ask him, hello, Mr. Diaphragm, good morning. Today, <laughs> I want to sing a long aria, a long phrase, a long note. Can you please stay it down? Is it possible? You know, would be nice if you, <laughs> if you would leave me do it. Let me do it. Well, the answer will be no. Mm. He will not like it at all. <laughs> so we need, to be strong enough here to, to give the command, first of all, and enough strong in the body, all the muscles involved here in the front, on the side, in the back. The back is super essential. The back is everything for us. The back is the power of a singer hmm. to make this resistance. It keeps him uh, quiet down and slow down this sort of slow, 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 slow movement, which he has to do. Otherwise, mm. we would fail and die. So thank you, Mr. Diaphragm, that you do this. Thank you so much. But what we do, we interfere. We change his rhythm. We slow down his rhythm. This is breath support or appoggio. Appoggio is more correct. <laughs> that doesn't matter. So yeah. this is the resistance we spoke about. And how do we do it? The answer here is our back. The back of a singer is his power. So okay. try to have a very strong back. Go swimming, become strong. You can feel right. your back and you can train your back. If you don't feel your back while you're singing, believe me, you're not supporting. You're not sustaining, you're not helping, you're not carrying your larynx. It's not there, it's just not there. To be there, you have to feel it. So there are little maneuvers to feel it. Little maneuvers, little tricks, little... Huh? Um, you can feel it, first of all, by having a real mm -hmm. high posture, really 
like a queen. You need to feel your spine stretch. You have to be, feel tall. Your neck has to be tall. So this curve here has to become really like a wall. You need to feel a certain a sort of wall holding you, helping you, which is actually uh, your, your back. back, the spine, the neck. The power of these muscles is enormous, it's magic. Uh, the power of these muscle, muscles is magic, if you know how to use them. So yeah. if you want to, to try to feel your back, there is a little, there are many maneuvers. Now we don't have the time to do them all. I can show you just one, yeah? Just a little. Yeah, example. show us the best one. The best one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know if it is the best, everyone. Uh, needs some time to be guided uh, through different strategies. This is just one example. You can imagine, for example, 90 degrees here, 90 degrees there, yeah? To, to hold yourself mm, and to slightly, slightly become taller. So it's not about the movement. It's about stretching your spine. While you stretch your spine, please, 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 huh? Stay very grounded on the floor. Your body will, in your body, if you do it right, you feel something like, <laughs> <laughs> like that. Yes, your spine will become stronger and taller. And also, when you do this, this little movement, try maybe to a slightly, a slightly bit, yeah, to make this little movement to the back, but it's an internal movement. We don't see it from outside. Now I'm just a bit exaggerating to be more clear. Huh? It's not that you see someone on the stage making the strange things. You don't mm -hmm. see anything. It's really an internal action of the muscles. But it is true. It is real. It's not blah, blah, blah. It's not imaginary, real nice sound. No, no. It does not work like this. You need to work with your muscles. We are spoken. So the muscles on the sides of the neck. And the muscles yes. of the back, yes. they basically, if yes. I understand correctly, they basically go sort of like sideways and then yes, yes. spread. Yes. Sort of. You become high and this become very strong, even that when bigger muscles take over, yes, of course, they help little muscles and the little muscles can relax. Big muscles mm, take the work of little muscles. Imagine when you, for example, write. So maybe I will be more clear. If you write, you take a pencil, yeah? And you do it just with little muscles. This means only the fingers. How is it to write like this? Difficult, huh? Mm. Unstable, not nice. But if I help little muscles with big muscles, mm. what do I get? Stability. Yep. Right? It's the same. So this stabilizes, the neck stabilizes our larynx. And the neck also has the magic power to stabilize another thing, but this would be another chapter for another conversation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> our velum for classical singing, very important, the soft palate. It will stabilize this mm -hmm. and that. And the back, in the back, so, 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 so important, yeah? Well, really become stronger and I feel it. I feel really stretched from here to there and it will really keep my diaphragm expanded. So I will be able to do the resistance we spoke about, yeah? And so I will be able to make longer notes, to have a control on my breath. And I want just to uh, add one little thing with uh, which is also important because we did not mention them and they are also there. We did not mention the low abdominal muscles. I want to mention this because otherwise it seems that <laughs> I forgot them. I didn't did not for, forgot them, but they are, of course, as the word says, eh? low abdominal muscles, okay? Mm. They are there, yes but we need to know when. Uh, and also there, there is some time, a bit of confusion. Sometimes we start immediately pushing with the abdominal muscles uh, too strongly. This can also create actually uh, too much pressure. 
I think that the lower abdominal muscles are there, yes, and they should also uh, be part of the game. But when, when we slowly, slowly feel that, well, this is going to ooh, finish, eh? the balloon starts to, to empty. And then at that moment, at that very moment, the lower abdominal muscles are like a sponge. Then we start to, okay, now that's the moment to take the little reserve and we, we squeeze the sponge. So hmm. then there is this extra help, huh? like the toothpaste <laughs> at the end. <laughs> so they are part of the game, yes. But always we have to understand what to do when. So to make it short, it's all about strategies. Yeah. It's a sport. If you know how to do it, strangely enough, it can become really, really easy. But if you don't have this clarity, it can be very, very confusing. I know this. I was there. Yeah. And it's, it's uh, funny to me that um, singing easily, you know, singing with ease sometimes takes hard work. But that, that's, the, that's like the, the counterintuitive thing because you want to, if, you, if you're thinking about singing with ease, you're thinking, I don't have to do any work. But that's not the case. You're supposed to know what is the right kind of work and what are the right muscles that should be working. Right? Most of us just um, don't have good instincts for singing and we're singing with the wrong muscles. So, you know, to learn how to change that, especially if you start singing later on in life, um, even, you know, even after growing up, even if you start like me when I was 21, it's the only time, when, uh, the first time when I started taking lessons, then you have to start changing those habits and that is work. Yes, yes to unlearn is much, much more difficult to unlearn yeah. than to learn well immediately. So it's exactly. very important yeah. really to, to have a good mentor and to find someone who does not maybe just speak about yes, nice sounds and copy me and try this and make it round and make it soft and make it light but how do I do it? How do I do it? How should I do it? But really, I uh, has an approach uh, with singing like uh, a, sport, a sporter would, uh, would do and would have. Yeah, they so really have awareness. Uh, physiological instructions for you, not just the metaphors, and not, which are very helpful, by the way. Yeah, what, what, you, what you showed us with, uh, with the pencil and the, like, uh, and you had all kinds of images for us and that, that was really um they're putting it together but it has to be in combination with actual physiological function I think otherwise it, yes. you can basically just shoot everywhere and hit something maybe um, yeah, yeah i agree exactly yeah and nowadays we can nowadays we have the luck that we have uh, the technology that allows us to understand it so why not using it for our yeah. advantage Yes, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Yes, that I think I think it got more and more fascinating as we as we went. <laughs> yes, well, it is uh, an argument uh, you could stay hours speaking about it, and of course there are more and more uh, exercises. Huh? Um, for example, just to help more and give another little advice to find mm -hmm. the neck uh, support, the help. Huh? And I, I say it again, support in the sense of caring, in the sense of sustaining, in the sense of stabilizing, stabilizing, yes. You can, for example, put just very easily, nothing special, your hand here, uh, where we have this little hole here at the end of and the skull. skull. There is a little hole, I think, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, okay. So if you push a tiny bit slightly, nothing special, but a tiny bit towards your head but your head also uh, pushes towards the hand what happens what happens resistance again you feel whoa something starts to stretch what your neck your spine at the same time hmm, while doing this try to become a bit taller like a queen <laughs> a model up 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 and you feel you should feel if you do it right you should feel your neck working and even your back. So if you can identify, if you can feel them, well, 
it's a lot. Then you say, okay, these are the muscles I should I should feel. Okay, interesting. I didn't know. I never I never felt them. Oh, how interesting. So the more you feel them, and you can really sing doing mm, this little maneuver. For example, if you do uh, also something really, 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 really simple, two notes, I don't know, or a little jump, yes? You can do it maybe once, just normal as you use, like nothing special. And then, okay, what happens? What happens? Is it better? Is it worse? Does it help or not? What impact does it have if I start to work with my muscles here in the neck and in the back? We'll see. So, and now, it's like amplified. I don't know if you heard it through the technology. Maybe yes. I maybe heard no. it definitely sounded more stable and it was clear that you had more air, that you could go mm -hmm. on for longer. More power. The sound is amplified. Yeah. It's just more consistent and my spine starts to resonate. So this is not blah, blah, blah. This is real. This is real. Mm. This, this really functions. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, it absolutely does. I, I want to say for, um, you know, from my experience, it's usually for beginners, um, very important to first really learn about the correct posture before doing actual work with muscles, especially neck muscles, because so many people want to do this. No, 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 no. So, this is a misunderstanding. Yeah. Uh, so and I also, know. yeah, so either they do this, so or that this, this works, right? Yes. So you need to, you need to learn the basically the principles of what the relations are between the different parts of the body, and then that kind of muscle work will be magic for you. Yeah. But you it needs to be in line like this this kind of um, I think you called it once anchoring, right? This yes, kind of yes. it's like an anchor, like a ship in yeah. the middle of, of the sea. Yeah. But it's really stabilizing. It's really stabilizing. Exactly. It's really caring. It's really supporting. So mm -hmm. if I want to carry this, yes, it's a muscular work. It's not a thought. If I want to carry this, I have to use muscles. Yeah. If yeah. I don't use muscles, it just will fall. For sure. It's the same thing. So yep. we stabilize, we really carry, we really stabilize our larynx and also our velum because mm -hmm. in classical singing, we need, of course, more space and uh, we need also the velum, so the soft palate to stay up, especially in the high register. And this is also another plus point advantage of using these muscles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah so, uh, yeah, so, so basically that's, uh, if I can sum it up, if you want to support, you need to get good vocal cord function. You need to get, um, basically get your inhale uh, correct. Yeah, so it's not too much and not to create pressure with your breath. Then you need to learn how to work with your muscles around the diaphragm and the back muscles. And then after that, you can think maybe about the lower abdominal muscles to sort of like finish the job nicely. Is that so it sums it up in a, in a nice plan, do you think? Yes, 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 uh, of course. To have the consciousness like a, a, a good uh, shark player, yeah? Yeah, like, like a to do. Yeah, there are paths that uh, mm -hmm. win always. There are paths that are always okay. And certainly is... Uh, don't breathe too much. Don't think that more I breathe in, the better I will sing. No, more no. you hold the breath that you have taken in, more you have the skill to make uh, this resistance, the better you will sing. So it's not about quantity of breath, it's about being able uh, to make this resistance. Yes, mm -hmm. and so, very important the vocal closure very important to watch out that the, the sound is really on the breath 
ah, eh, e. It is sort of baby glottal. I'm not speaking that we have, we need to make a glottal, but it's like when we speak in normal day, every day we speak like this and it's not dangerous. We say, ah, you're here. Mm. Oh, how nice. Ah, it rains. What is this? Mm -hmm. This is a baby glottal. The vocal closure is perfect. Ah, you're here. Ah, 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 ah. And we need to feel uh, the breath underneath. Ah, and make the resistance. And then, of course, um, so this is the first apoggio. And then, of course, with the muscles of the neck, with the muscles of the torso, with the muscles of the back, keep open our body and trying really, really to make the resistance to, to be able to, to hold uh, the, the diaphragm, which is so powerful and he wants to, of course, go back in his low position. We can also even go down on our mm -hmm. knees in order to, uh, uh, to uh, uh, especially on high notes, so that it does not mm, jump up. The more we sing high, the more we should think low. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree, but that's a completely different subject. Yeah, yeah, but this is also a part of uh, the breath support, but uh, yeah, maybe we would need an appointment. <laughs> yeah. So, it means that um, the compression, the compression that we're doing, compression is this resistance, huh? It's not always the same. It's not one energy from the start to the beginning. It's always mm, no, from zero to ten. Sometimes it's energy two, mm. sometimes it's energy five, sometimes energy ten if needed. And so this is really an elastic. It's a movement. It's not. Yeah my position and the energy changes on behalf are we coming from up from down is it short is it long is it high is it forte? is it piano in which uh, range i am it's like having a little computer inside that with is adjusting uh, all the time uh, the amount the amount of compression the amount mm -hmm. of resistance that we do it's not one so the hojo is not one mm? it's like a yeah. choreography it's a but it is the same but it is the same mechanism to yeah, 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 of course. It's just uh, what I wanted to say, uh, also to learn with experience, to have the instinct, the intuition, okay, now I need energy two or energy 10, very right. different. Yeah. But it's always the same, of course, uh, system, of course. So the compression, uh, for example, for longer notes, higher notes, especially, should increase. Then we have to go over direction, well, maybe energy, hmm. Eight, nine, ten. Yeah, but not the more so challenging, ten. the more challenging the phrase or the note. The more involved, it, yeah. Um, involved the, the higher the scale. For example, for example, yes. So this is also important to understand that it also changes uh, on behalf of the range, mm -hmm. the dynamics, of the length of the sentence. It's not one fixed. That's uh, yeah. why we need so much time to make a classical singer. It's not a casualty. Huh? Yeah. The ingredients are many ingredients and to isolate them and to train them and then to connect them and find the balance. Well, it needs time. It's doable, but it needs time. Yes. And uh, no, no better way to learn it by uh, experimenting with it. Just you know, yeah, yes, of course, of training course. the muscles, the and then you know, and then actually going on stage because when you go on stage, you get that basically that sensation of how much exactly you need. Yes, yes, the stage for certainly is the best school because there you can see and experiment immediately. Well, does it work or not? And yep. if not, what does not work or what should right. change? It's the best uh, feedback that you can get. Yes. yes. And it uh, obliges you, it puts you really the pressure to learn quickly, to become a very quick learner. You cannot postpone it. You have to do it at the moment. Right. Yeah. Well, that's, yeah, that was uh, fantastic. Thank, Thank you, you very much for, uh, for this lesson. And well, uh, I hope I hope people pleasure. take those uh, those advices and like pieces of advice and 
and and try them out and um yeah go on the quest yeah because uh, so many people want more power and how can i get more power in my voice that's how yeah? but the power the power as we said starts certainly from how we close yes for sure well we we listed the, the steps uh in you know in the support mechanism so i i think that's pretty clear and um it's good to put some order in all of the different information out there about support um yeah if you guys are watching there please um like leave comments if you try the tactics that capuchin uh, suggested um and if you have any questions you can also put them there and uh check out um her website and all the links that i will put uh below and i really really want to thank you for uh, taking this time and uh i hope uh maybe you can tell us right now you're t teaching online of course right i'm teaching but, online because uh i'm italian and in italy we are still in quarantine and yeah. well there is no other way so at yeah. the moment it's mainly mainly yes so yes online. and do you know do you know when uh god willing when uh, all things come down where will you be teaching will you be staying in italy or do you not know yet yes i will be staying in italy but i travel quite uh, a lot also because i am always invited here and there to give master classes i organize mm -hmm. master classes myself and i have also students uh, in germany sometime i'm in berlin sometime i'm in zurich sometime i'm in holland yeah. so if someone needs so the best way passion, is just to contact you and yes and the best you. way of course yes but we'll have to see what happens next uh, with this uh, situation if we have still to stay home i'm also teaching online quite a lot so this is also yeah. actually a nice way no one has to travel and we we can really work on vocal technique uh, online i do it uh, yes with singers from USA to Australia to Canada, it's really possible to help. It's yes. a really a possibility, even for skeptical singers who don't believe that it might be possible, it is possible. It is possible to speak about technique and to help to, and to make really the difference and uh, have results. It is possible, honestly possible. So this is yeah. something yeah. that this period teach us that online is uh, a new possibility yeah i totally i totally like uh, that concept myself and sometimes there are even um advantages to it i wrote an article about that like the pros and cons of online lessons um so that it's definitely something that you want to do it's better than nothing it's better than not getting support from your teacher so just contact them and get uh, some lessons online. No, but it's not uh, to, uh, to see it like better than nothing because it seems that, oh, online lesson is not so valid. I mean, I think it's really valid. There are persons uh, at the other side of the ocean that will be never yeah, be able to, to come over here and yes. they can get an immediate help. And the help is, is real, is concrete. Because yep. we are speaking of, uh, about masters and now I had not the time to show all the maneuvers that we can uh, uh, apply, but they are very clear. If you know how Absolutely. to do it, it's not so impossible. It's not an impossible dream. Everyone, really, everyone can sing. Yeah, I, I, I absolutely it with clear words. That's I absolutely it. find that uh, ninety percent or so of the vocal issues are visible. So you just look at the student and you know what to work on. Yeah. So, so yeah. yeah, online lessons are definitely a thing. Yeah. Okay. Then um, I think that's it for today. Okay. And thank you yeah, so very much. Good. Well, thank Stay you. Safe. It was a pleasure. It was a pleasure. Maybe we can uh, speak next time about something else, some other nice uh, argument topic if you want. Yeah, let's talk so about it. Exchange also between colleagues, uh, uh, thoughts. It's mm -hmm. always very inspiring. So thank you so much for the invitation. And I hope thank that you. I could help a tiny bit uh, from far away from Italy, the one who are watching. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank and thank you for watching. Okay. Yes. Bye for Bye. now. Bye.